Welcome to On Deck with Mike Stewart. In this episode of Limitless, Welcome Aboard, I'm going to share with you what it took for me to go from no experience, no references, no way, nobody I knew worked on a super yacht. I'm going to share with you how I did it. How I went from having no experience to getting on that super yacht limitless. Ironically, one of the smallest photos I have on my wall in my office is of the biggest yacht I ever worked on. That's 300, that's what 315 feet folks, 95 meters, 96 meters uh, looks like when you uh, pixelate it and frame it in a little tiny picture that big. So, <laughs> but I find that amusing. Anyway, I'll share with you how my career change might lead to you making a career change. One of my favorite quotes from my favorite rock and rollers, Lenny Kravitz, you ain't busy living, then you're busy dying. You know, and I took that to heart. So if you don't like what you do, life is way too short to do, be doing something. Hey, I've done it all. It wasn't, I haven't just been working on uh, mega yachts my whole life, no. I've got a long laundry list of uh, things, jobs that I've done, careers that I've started. I have literally done it all, okay? Everything from washing dishes to pulpwood, cutting down pine trees to make pulpwood out of it, uh, paper boy, grocery bagger, you name it, a limo driver, photographer, construction worker, the list goes on and on. I, I could kill you with the details of everything that I've done. So I worked in a video store that made chicken wings and delivered videos and cold beer and chicken wings. So yeah, I've done it all. So there's no job that I probably don't have a little experience doing. So, but at this time, what makes this relevant is at that point in my life, I was living in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, the USA. I was working for Life Touch National School Studios. It's a huge um, company. Takes one out of three uh, school pictures, one out of three kids in the country school pictures. So I did that. That's a grind, let me tell you. <laughs> so, but to all my fellow Life Touch photographers out there, great job, great job. Just keep them coming, keep them coming. Let me know, like hit the like button, subscribe button, and let me know all my uh, fellow Life Touch photographers out there what your personal best is. What's your personal for one day shoot? How many kids have you shot? Career change, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Boom, how I started with no experience to get on a super yacht. I just woke up one day and decided I didn't want to take pictures anymore, school pictures anymore. I didn't want to work on yearbooks, school yearbooks. I didn't like it doing it. I'd been doing it for eight years. I didn't want to do it anymore. So now, what am I going to do? Super yachts. I live in Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale is the super yacht capital of the entire world. That's right. It's true. You might not believe me. It's true. More super yachts, more yachts per capita in Fort Lauderdale than anywhere else in the world. Second place that I'm aware of that I would say is the second mega yacht capital of the world would be Antibes in south of France. Check it out. Antibes. Great place to visit. Great place to uh, take your yacht. All right. Anyway, let's get back to the subject, shall we? I decided to, uh, I did some research and I find the Chapman, I found the Chapman School of Seamanship in none other than Stewart, Florida, this guy's hometown. Shout out Stewart, Florida. Number one in the most treacherous inlet in all of the Eastern Seaboard. That inlet would be the St. Lucie Inlet, St. Lucie River. The reason it's the most treacherous is because of all the rivers and intercoastal and the currents going in and out of there. Sandbars galore, you never know where they're gonna be from one day to the next. Local knowledge is a must, I guarantee it. If you've ever been in and out of Stewart Inlet, please hit the like button. Not liking for the St. Lucie Inlet, but liking that you survived because there's a lot of people that didn't. That's why they call that area of the South Florida coast, the Gold Coast because of all the gold that was spilled on the ocean floor from all the shipwrecks. The ships would come, 
and those treacherous reefs would just rip open their holes and spill their bounty on the ocean floor where my ancestors would scurry out in their little canoes and piros and skiffs and uh, collect all the gold and bring it back. And that's how Stewart, Florida on the Gold Coast became so prosperous. So I have no idea. I just made all that up. It was probably founded by pirates. <laughs> Who knows? I can't even imagine what it must have been like living back then in the 16th century. Woo! Mosquitoes galore. Alligators and snakes, baby. But anyway, Henry Flagler came down and changed all that. So, hey, stick with me. Well, I'll take you on a wild adventure. We'll talk about all kinds of stuff. All right, so, job search. No, 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 no. Back that up. Let's rewind to career change. That's right. My career change started when I did some research and I decided that the Chapman School of Seamanship was the place that I would decide to give my money. They're very reputable. They have a, a, a the Chapman School of Seaman, Seamanship book about yay thick. I should have a copy around here, my apologies. Next time I will show you what that looks like. Did not, did not think about that. But it is a world renowned, uh, highly respected textbook on seamanship how to become a professional mariner, which is what I wanted. So I went to the Chapman School of Seamanship. Once I had my US Coast Guard license, captain's license in hand, I scurried back down to Fort Lauderdale where I started looking for a job. I signed up with crew agencies, remember that. They're gonna be your number one reference to get a job on a boat in South Florida or anywhere in the world, you can get a job from one of the crew agencies and fly to the Med. Crew agencies, number one resource that help you get on deck if that's what you're looking to do. So we'll check out, I'll give you a link to all the crew agencies, all the top three or four or five crew agencies that I use, you'll get the idea of it to uh, look for a job. Get your resume and your CV up to snuff. You know, you're gonna put down, you're gonna list all your credentials and certifications. You've got to have STCW 95, folks. You've got to have your safety certifications before you even think about getting on a boat. They got to know that you understand basic firefighting, uh, advanced firefighting. What are you going to do on board? You can't call 911. A fire truck's not going to come out there and save you. The most dangerous thing in the world on a boat is a fire. So you're going to be trained in basic fire basic safety skills, water survival, first aid, CPR, et cetera, et cetera. But you have to get those basic safety courses under your belt before you can step on board. That's a must. Uh, probably get a TWIC card. That's a T-W-I-C or otherwise known as a Transportation Workers Identification Card issued by the Homeland Security. They'll do an FBI and a Homeland Security uh, background check make sure you're not a terrorist or something, and then uh, issue you a biometric card, and I will show you what one looks like right here. You're definitely gonna need these. You're gonna need your Merchant Mariner credentials. This is my booklet for my U.S. Coast Guard license, master's license. 3,000 gross registered tons right here, and then of course my passport, so I can go travel all over the country. You're definitely going to need those. And let's see. Boom, boom, boom. No, I got a bunch of stuff here, but I don't have my TWIC card. Ah, here it is. That's what a TWIC card looks like. Okay. It says TWIC on it, has your expiration date and your name, and that little chip right there is your biometric information. Get that, that'll help you out as well. I'll give you a leg up on all the other people that are looking for work out there on the super yacht. You're gonna get your CV and your resume up to par, up to date, with all your latest safety credentials listed. And then you're gonna start passing them out. You're gonna give a copy to every crew agency. You're gonna have a copy to uniform shops, chandleries, ship's chandlery. That's a ship, that's a yacht supply store. Uh, marinas, walk down the marina dock and hand them out to the different captains and crew members you find on the dock. I've done it all, I've passed it all. So one day, I get a phone call from Big Al's Uniform Shop in West Palm Beach, Florida. <laughs> Big shout out to Big Al. He called me up, he got a hold of one of my, came across, I dropped off one of my resumes, 
And uh, months, months later, he called me, months later of looking for work, that's right. Uh, don't think it's just gonna happen. Sometimes it can just happen. For me, it didn't just happen. But months later, I got a call from Big Al and uh, he connected me with the captain of the Motor Yacht Limitless in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I interviewed for the job, nailed it, got the gig, and uh, off I went. Poof. Pack your bag, son. You're going to Barcelona to join the crew. That's right. Before I knew it, in the next 24 to 48 hours, I had packed my go bag, wrote a note to my wife saying I'd be back whenever. <laughs> Literally, didn't know when. But I'd gotten a job on a super yacht and I was flying to Barcelona via the owner's ticket the owner's jet, headed to Barcelona and to join the crew of the Motor Yacht Limitless. It was moored at MB92 right there in downtown Barcelona. It was amazing flying in, looking out my little window of my jet and to see, I could see the Limitless from like 5,000 feet <laughs> or 15,000 feet. It was amazing. It's big. It's pretty big. You can see it from outer space. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know. But I joined the crew in Barcelona. What can I say about Barcelona? Had the time of my life in that city. It is an incredible city. I highly encourage anybody who has plans to travel, check out Barcelona. You will not be um, uh, disappointed. No. They've got so much cool architecture culture, nightlife, Woo. Woo! I can't even tell you. You know, they still have the strip there where the uh, uh, Summer Olympics Village was, and they've turned it all into clubs and restaurants. It's pretty cool, definitely pretty cool, check it out. Anyway, and there's a lot of mega yachts, a lot of super yachts that hang out in Barcelona. So we were there in Barcelona with the crew of the Limitless. Yes, indeed. There's a whole story we'll get into. I'm gonna give you a little teaser of the next uh, installment, the next uh, misadventure of the Limitless crew coming up down the line. It's gonna be exclusively about where's our chef? Our chef went missing one day after a, a very eventful night out. He never made it back to the boat. We were very concerned. A lot of things can happen. I've been mugged in Barcelona, broad daylight, walking down the Plaza de Riel. Boom, get mugged. I got my wallet back because the muggers were uh, horrible. Pickpockets. Yeah, they weren't muggers, they were pickpocketers. Couple of kids, couple of teenagers thought they were going to pickpocket American and uh, they were so sloppy at it, I had to uh, chase them down and get my wallet back. Tragedy had befallen on the Limitless crew. We were missing our cook. Our chef had, was gone. He didn't come back. Breakfast, we let it slide. Lunch, we got concerned. By uh, dinner time, we were just downright worried that something terrible had happened to him. So, in an uh, upcoming episode of Limitless, we will delve, we were going to dive into that. What happened to our cook? We'll go into that further. Anyway, I'd like to leave you with this little tidbit. Don't be afraid to make a change. It can be scary. The ground under your feet is moving. You don't know, there's no stability, but sometimes you just gotta go for it. Sometimes you just have to make that leap of faith regardless. You just gotta go for it. Just do it. Don't be afraid. If it's something you wanna do, if it's something you truly believe you want to do, you better go do it. You don't wanna, have, you don't wanna regret later in life when you can't, when you're unable to because maybe you don't have the health or the physicalness to do what you once thought you wanted to do. Anyway, that's getting all jumbled up. Just do it. Don't be afraid. Strike out on an adventure for God's sake. You got one life. Let's live it. Okay. All right. That's it for this section of B-rolls. And uh, like I said, kick off your shoes. Come on aboard. Let's see what happens next.